Gotta do a big giant dish. If you're just getting into long range hunting or you're looking to increase your skills as a marksman, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Extreme Outer Limits Podcast. We, we haven't said the F-bomb, have we, but pretty much... Oh, every, that's like a comma for me, so I, I'll have to keep F-bombs out. If I start rolling, just have a keyword like Syracuse. That means stop going <laughs> like off. Like a safe word? A safe word. <laughs> if, if I'm being honest, I was thinking of the Fifty Shades of Grey movie I just saw. They had a safe word, and I was trying to remember what it was because that would be funny. You should know that. We found the biggest goat, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you're not going to kill that with a bow. So it's roughly 1,200 yards over. Six hours later, I'm it. choking it out because the first bullet didn't kill it. I get to the bottom, all good, come on down. Because once I hit and I fell that far, I'm like, well, I don't want to be the only guy that fell that far. <laughs> Everybody should yeah. experience that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then it, it has the, you know, it's like homeostatic temperature sure. between That's the two. That's a big word, Cal. Yeah, it, it finds a balance. I'm so that, a that means that they equal <laughs> each other out, Aaron. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the Extreme Outer Limits podcast. Today we are in the MOA slash EOL rifle shop. We've got Aaron Snyder of Kafaru Packs with us. And he uh, actually just wrapped up a bunch of filming that I got lucky and missed. But you guys did a full presentation from what I understand, huh? I have a PhD in, in uh, one and done. So I actually knocked it out of the park. I'm not going to lie. We didn't have to edit anything. Uh, I don't <laughs> even think I stumbled on my words. I did have a question just to start things off, I brought this up on my live story. Did you watch the Chipmunks, the three? Where the, <laughs> when the I was guy, a kid? Yeah. yeah. You know, and he's like, <laughs> <Yes>. Alvin. <laughs> so when you need shit done, do you yell, Calvin, <laughs> yeah. like he did? Or it is did. it a different voice? No, it's, <laughs> it's fairly <laughs> similar. It's fairly <laughs> similar to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was just curious about that before we get the podcast rolling. I What I like to do, actually, to be fully transparent, is when I'm – at my home office and I do that, right? I call him and he knows that's going to happen. What I actually have is the DVR on my phone of the security cam footage, you know, yes. the cameras in the building, and I can actually watch the reaction when <laughs> that's happening. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Why aren't you answering the phone? I we saw were talking you just earlier about packing out meat and somebody in here Oh, that said, guy is an expert. <laughs> well, they said, this is how Bob does it. And then another one of your guys said, really? Bob says, you guys do it. That's not how Bob does it. <laughs> <laughs> it was on Calvin's Facebook, and I had to own up to it, actually. It was, to I was packing out one of Bob's elk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a little bit of shit for Somebody's it. Somebody's like, why, why is Bob not packing out that head? And Bob's like, well, because he's employed by me. <laughs> I really his, only his, had His job the, scope is very wide. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, I only funny. had one answer to really go to, and I tried to hold, pull the whole age you know oh, the deal? Yeah, yeah. Some guys bid on it, so it, I think it became acceptable by the end of it. How old are you? 41. Oh, see, you can't pull that shit on me. I'm probably older than you. <laughs> probably? Uh, we're right there. Oh, it's, okay, all right. I'm 41 as well. If you pulled the age thing, I'd be like, pick that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, well, so the uh, the podcast is going to basically be centered around uh, the new pack. So, Calvin, why don't I hand it to you? Because what we want to do is take kind of the evolution of how we got here. Sure, sure. So uh, Aaron and I have been friends for a long time uh, before I actually worked for Extreme Outer Limits or MOA. And uh, I'd ran different packs all the time until uh, I started running Kafaru's. But at the time I was running a Kafaru and Bob and I were on a uh, spring bear hunt together. For the, It was our first hunt that we'd been hunting with. We were filming a TV show and uh, we were discussing packs. They came up just like most conversations do. We're hiking up some crappy hill headed up there and Bob said something to the effect of, you know, God, I hate this effing pack that I'm <laughs> using. It's so uncomfortable for carrying a, a rifle and, and this and that. So I, I start going into, yeah, you know, my buddy Aaron at Kafaru, we, you know, we could really design this cool deal. I have this awesome idea. And then Bob started throwing back ideas to me and we start going back and forth. And, uh, you know, m me, it would have ended right there. I would have just bitched about my pack for the rest for another 10 years and just <laughs> used it. But Bob Beck being himself, he looks at me and he goes, well, dummy, why don't you just actually make it happen? And I'm like, well, what, what do you mean? And, and uh, next thing I know, if you know Bob Beck, we're, we're literally in the Ford driving to Denver, Colorado to meet Aaron two weeks later, you know, because uh, I reached out to Aaron about it and said, hey, we want to do this. And he said, well, we're actually looking at doing something similar. Yeah, that um, timed out really well because timing is 
critical in any kind of deal right so you guys were actually itching a little bit too so oh yeah no it worked out great yeah you guys drove the the whole way and uh it's funny because i had about 14 people call me uh and they're like i don't know how it's going to work out with you and bob because you're both really blunt and really up front and i'm like should be easy a quick meeting then and at one point in the meeting you're like well do we drive home then or are we going to do it and i'm like okay that guy's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that, that simplified shit a lot. So yeah, it was it was uh, quick and effective. Uh, so Bob and I get get there, and uh, what we wanted to do was, you know, our, our level of expertise in game is is long range shooting, long range hunting, right? Yeah. So we we went into the shop, we grabbed kind of all these different models of our rifles, uh, different examples of optics that we run, uh, our bipod shooting as- accessories range finders, how we normally... Turret and bipod yeah. width was essential for Yep, that. how we carry our ammunition, all the tools of the trade, so to speak, uh, for the style of hunting that w- that we are experts in, or, you know, or we at least like to think we're pretty... <laughs> you play experts we on might the podcast. Think a little more yeah. <laughs> I'm not an expert at anything. <laughs> so, uh, so we do well, that. Hold on. We did expertly test out the rev limiter of that Ford pickup for like 20-some hours. We did. There. You can go through the state of Wyoming... At a hundred miles an hour, the entire time, and nobody looks at you, <laughs> and nobody even looks at you. Just the just the antelope, they yeah, might just look. the antelope. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. so <laughs> so we end up there, and uh, you know, introduce Bob to Aaron, Aaron to Bob, and uh, put these two hard headed guys together in the room with uh, Eric. What's Eric, Eric Bender. Bender? He's yeah. a designer, at Kefaro. He's kind of he's um he's yeah like he's the, a designer. He's like the cutting wizard. He yeah he's kind of the brains of the um, the final product. So as as it as it worked out, I as I told you guys. I'll come in with an idea or I'll call Bender on the side of a mountain. He'll draw it up. If I have service, he'll take a screenshot of what I just told him. And he'll be like, is this what you want? And then he'll build it um, where I'll have the base idea, but he'll make it look cool or perform. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys came out and he's making sketches and everything else. So that's what Bender does and, and what he did with this. Yeah. yeah. Super talented guy. So we, we lay out all these rifles and bipods and we start having discussions. And next thing I know, you know, Bender has all of our pieces on a measuring table and he's taking photos and measurements and making notes and, and, and doing all these things. So, I think we should probably discuss what what was it, Bob, that we were looking for? What were you looking for in a pack specifically versus what you were running before? I think, well, there's two things. So we're going to bridge this. We had this conversation before, but we're going to have it now. So the, we were using Eberly stocks and because um, they were kind of really your only option at that time for a gun-bearing pack. Yep. Uh, but the problem is they're soft, right? The integrity of that pack, it just, when you walk, it you know it does one of these tricks. And then if you throw water in the mix... Yeah. Right. Then it gets even oh, way when, worse. When it rains, those things weigh 20 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So even even over time, when you throw it in the back of your pickup or whatever, mm-hmm. the composure of that thing just goes all to hell, right? Well, and then on top of it, they made a position statement or their owner made a position statement that they were against long-range hunting. So that... That was the nail in the coffin. That was the nail. Yeah, I remember when that came out. We couldn't stay supporting that. I mean, that's their opinion, and if that's how they want to run their business, fine. But we found a much better option, and you guys were all for doing whatever. It's funny. As Patrick, the owner of Kefaru, he's retired, but he's gotten into this long range. You know, it's 70-some years old. He's gotten into this long range kick, right? And uh, so he's, like, explaining all these things to me um, about – something this is where you know we we needed to build this kind of pack i was like well look um glenn eberly has a, a patent on this certain thing but what we can do it's kind of just take a scabbard and put it in a nomad or whatever so when you guys contacted us i was like hey we've already kind of got the base idea in the sense of you know we will put x in y or whatever yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. guys just brought it home because i'm not a, <laughs> i pretty much when it's time to shoot something with a gun all options have totally been like I've, I've tried everything with the bow and i'm like can you please give me your gun so i can shoot this where you guys that's your thing and that's what we want to do is have people like you telling us what to build because it's just not my deal so it worked out great yeah sure. yeah for sure i i've been running kafaru and packing out dozens and dozens and dozens of animals every year and learned that it's the only system that i trust and mine. as tough as it can be yeah I pack out all bobs too so <laughs> so i knew we wanted to do it with with kafaru and it, 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 you know, it's an American company and American made components. And, and that's kind of what we're all that's about. Nice. That's the kind of guys we are. So, so that's really, 
what we want to do. The other thing, you know, a lot of the Kafaru packs, for example, that I was running, all I was doing was buckling my rifle on the side of it and yeah. hunting all the time. And Bob was about to rip my throat out because I'm out there hunting with these, you know, <laughs> or we have, we sell expensive rifles and then they'd come back and my rifle would have to get re-seracoded at the end of the year. Yeah. And I mean, it, what about the one you dumped over, flipped over, fell yeah, on a cliff? I did was a that? cartwheel in the Frank Church Wilderness with one attached to my pack. And, oh, yeah, that you know, and thank goodness we had a, a client that wanted to buy that rifle because he wanted the entire thing seracoded od green yeah so yeah. we're like oh we know just the gun for you that'll be perfect <laughs> you know for that and it, it was perfect so the the integrity of the rifle's just fine but it you know they were just getting abused i needed something that protected my rifle yeah. for the kind of hunting that i do versus just strapping it to the side of a pack center and wrapped is good yeah and it always side. was awkward you know how you know got an 8 to 10 12 pound rifle on one side of the pack and you're always trying to find that balance that is a good point you know you don't have w- without a arrangement you don't have to necessarily worry about how you're going to offset 10 pounds on the other side right you can center load that rifle and then just go on about your business especially if you got a spotter and a tripod yeah then you makes throw your a big small difference stuff in it really does yeah so well and I, i'll kind of take it from here because it's kind of comical of uh what happened after this big meeting and we decided we were going to do it and, <laughs> and i was pretty upfront. hey things do take a little bit of time here it actually ended up taking about four times the amount of time to a point. I think Bob was going to shoot me. We're um, coming to you almost two years after that meeting. Right yeah. Now. So what had happened is we had received so much growth at Kafaro. I thought, surely we can't receive any more growth than we are. Bender built. We uploaded some videos in a fairly decent, quick amount of time. And then everything went to shit. Um, and I'm traveling all over hunting. Um, some business things popped up. And a year, not a year later, seven or eight months later, I come over and talk to you at the sportsman show. I'm like, dude, we're good, but here's what's going on. I just, I'm, I'm going to be upfront with you. And you're like, you never answer the phone, asshole. I'm like, yeah, I know you're right. Totally. I should, I should answer the phone more often. I'm super busy, but this is the deal. And you basically were like, Hey, if you can do that, we're still good. Let's run with it. So I go back and I'm like, Bender, get this shit done. Now this guy's pissed and Bender tells me <laughs> this is the only bad side about bender the scabbard caps too difficult to build and i'm like what do you mean it's too difficult to build you built it and i showed it to him we're kind of in trouble then why didn't you <laughs> say it was too big i've already showed it to him and he's like well to fit because we needed it to fit multiple different you know whatever yeah. butt stocks and so we came up now this is months and months later we come up with the which actually is pretty cool because you can slide it out if you need to the the cap system the, the 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 stock cap to hold it in place so i run upstairs i'm like get this crap done right flipping now get it out to them we they need 20 of them so they ship it to you and at this time not not i wasn't mad at bob at all bob hasn't paid us yet because he doesn't have the full system he's got like a hundred percent of ninety five percent of what he needs, but exactly. that, it's like missing the lug nuts. He doesn't have them. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, hey Bob, I'm not mad, but and you're like, I need that. So I call you. I'm like, Bob, um, hey, we ship these out. He goes, as soon as I receive them, Cal gives me a good to go. Um, we'll submit payment. We'll roll with this. So Cal sends me a photo of his arm through the freaking it's, it's similar to this. Well, yeah, I'll just use that as an example. <laughs> um, so I must have scared my sewers to death because they shipped it out without sewing it together. So Calvin's arms through, there's no bottom. <laughs> through the top <laughs> of the <laughs> rifle cap. So they sewed it super fast for me. Um, and it was probably sewn super fast because it was only sewn about 75% because <laughs> they missed this part. So then you're like, hey, we'll ship them back. And I'm like, no, no, we're going to get this done. I'm going to have them rebuild them, redo them, and ship them to you. And then you guys finally got the total system. So, yeah. Yeah. Which, and you never did kill me, which was good. That's a positive <laughs> thing. So, here we sit in front of you. Yeah. So, that was two years yeah. in total. It were almost that. two years. Jeez. Yeah. 18, 20 months, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Bob, you've been hunting with this, the, the prototype, the original yeah. prototype now for over a year, right? So. Yeah. So, admittedly, I got the black sheep, right? The kind of the one that you just threw together on the concept. Well, and what was cool was that cap. I was like, oh, that's neat. And I'm like, well, if Bender built it, it can't be that hard. And then, yeah, you got the only one because no one wants to sew them. That was the problem. You That cap, yeah. right? Yeah, that you'll be, have the only one the rest of your life because I can't talk Indy Sewer into doing them again. You know, I got to be honest with you. I, I haven't spent a bunch of time with the new cap, but, and I and I do like the cap that I have, but I think the new cap has better quality. Yeah. It, it, as far as the construction of how it attaches and yeah. everything. 
I mean, it's pretty sleek setup. I like the system because it expands or contracts so you can get it to, to fit real tight on the yeah. rifle stock or not. Um, and like we sell a, an ultralight summit rifle that's real sh shorter barrel, real small. And most of the guys that run our pack currently, they don't even run the cap with, with that rifle because it's so small and it fits in there. Oh, yeah. The, the active straps keep it nice and tight in there. But then we put a, you know, a 26 inch barreled rifle. It's a little longer gun and the cap works really well. It can run up and down. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, a lot of modularity. Yeah, so. no, for sure. One, uh, the one thing I liked about it was no matter, you can really crank that cap down. And even if you, un if you're in a hurry, you can undo the Velcro and pull it out of the side if needed for without loosening if you had to do that um, which is another option the first one didn't have no matter what you had to loosen up the cap so it's kind of cool so two things i'm goes. thinking of we'll hit one and try to come back to the other is uh <clears throat> a little bit of feedback i think you always get it right no matter how good you try to make something somebody's gonna still go out of their way to try to remind you what you didn't do mm -hmm. um is there any validity to trying to make a skirt or a sock or something to close that little bit of gap that's left between that butt cover and the scabbard itself. Now, I kind of answer part of it. Me personally, if I'm if I can, I'll grab my rifle right from this way, and yep. I like to be able to grab the pistol grip. Yep. Well, if I had something there, obviously you're going to be trying to shuffle through it to get it out of the way in order to get any of that crap off. Mm -hmm. But some people seem to think that they don't want leaves or needles or whatever falling in there. I don't really sure. know how to answer that because so, I like to yeah. go grab that pistol grip and go. Yeah. So. Managing a, the majority of the sales for Bob's companies, I get I get that question all the time. And what this is my response to guys. I run a rear cap on my well, optic all yeah. the time, whatever it may be. So I have nothing sitting on my lens all the time. And what I don't want is that rifle against my back taking soaking up all my extra body heat and sweat that we get between a pack. I don't want the temperature of the environment inside the scabbard itself to be warmer than the outside ambient temperature. Because the last thing I want is to rip that gun out, pop my scope caps, and have fog immediately yeah so if we have the the passive design of that then it, it has the you know it's like homeostatic temperature sure. between That's the two a big word cow yeah it, it finds a balance I'm so that lost, that means that they equal <laughs> each other out aaron right. <laughs> son of a osmosis did he call you osmosis something? yeah i know <laughs> osmosis exactly yeah. well and i'm we built um one with uh, <laughs> it looks so goofy I, I we built one that was a slip sleeve to go over the uh, outer portion of yeah. the scabbard and it looked so goofy i, I was like no not no that. not because of the different barrel lengths obviously the mathematical equations of okay we need yeah. four inches of protection for the longest barrel so then that ends up being like 14 or 12 inches for a short barrel and it just looked ugly goofy and then you called me and said hey will you test this out and see if you get fog. And there was, when you enclo encapsulated that, so it, it happened quick from your body heat transferring through, immediately you had fog. And, and I'm not, I would have never even thought of that because I'm not a gun guy. Um, and that, that ended up being like the final, this may not be no, a great 100%. idea. And, and you can run a rain cover over the entire system if you wanted to. We offer those. So if you wanted to run a rain cover, you could. But uh, I would strongly suggest people not to, manufacture something to go over that entire just scabbard yeah just for the simple fact of it's going to fog up um well it probably will you're exactly right that's yeah. the same so that's kind of what we found through trial and error and that's because we've been running it for the last year i mean bob and i have been from arizona to bob's been to canada my, I mean, yeah my every environment seen you can some think mileage of. i mean yeah. that thing has seen some mileage yeah man, yeah so. no that's good i think um you know the the one thing um that um and i guess we could edit this out if we need to um beverly's had the patent on that system forever right and yep. he's got it umbrellaed really well as far as a scabbard you know how it's written yep. when we actually made a, a pack we called it the ramp mountain rambler to hold a gun and and uh it totally was completely different but i got a letter you know from glenn and or from his lawyer yeah and um I'm looking at and I'm reading the umbrella. I had hard patent attorney a look cease at and it. Assist and yeah, and, and I'm like, up. man, I we're not. It's not we're gonna. You know, he's like, you'll win in court. You're not, you know, patent infringement. But I'm like, you know, how much do I want to go into court because I'm not a gun guy. So right. we're not selling a ton of these. We're doing okay. So it actually worked out really well because this here, in my opinion, is a way better system. You guys are gun guys to help design it. 
And you can pop that off and use it as a case in your back seat of your vehicle that and then I just like. buckle it in where you you can't the other way around. So that part was a big thing for me was like, hey, this actually is a better system anyway because you know, one of the things I'm learning is I'm hunting all over the place. About the time you think you've got everything figured out, you're wrapped into something that you've never done. Riding 100%. a horse would be one of those problems, right? Yeah. BC, 30 miles in, and uh, you got to hook it on the, the saddle horn. There's no way around it, or it's gonna you're not going to be able to get it, right? You're no. going to get eaten by something, or you're not going to be able to shoot something or whatever. Yeah. And that was something I never would have thought of. You said, hey, that handle, or you did, one of yep. you guys needs to go over a saddle horn. Yep. Well, that's another thing. You're going to hang your whole pack on the saddle horn. That's kind of a pain. Where with this, you just unbuckle it out of the pack, and it'll go, right? Or four-wheelers is another one. You can take it off your pack if you're on a four-wheeler yep. or a boat and really protect it. You're knowing exactly where you're putting the rifle for protection compared to if it's in the pack, it can get the crap kicked and out And I've done it. what you're saying because obviously with the scabbard in there, your muzzle is going to hang lower than the lumbar of the frame, right? Yeah. So you can't ride a horse like that, obviously. So right. no matter what, you're going on the side with it. And then uh, a lot of times at our camp in Wyoming, you know, we get inclement weather or mud or snow or whatever. You got to pick and choose areas where you're going to hop off your horse and walk. Yeah. Yep. Well, sometimes if you're trudging through snow and you got way too much clothes on, it's nice to be able to take the pack off. Literally, I'll have the rifle on one side and I'll just hang my pack on the other side. Yeah. But then as soon as I get done getting through that bad area, grab the pack, throw it back on my back, hop on the horse, take off. 100%. Yep. And so then, that, that's real, a real life applicable use. That, so it's kind of almost a blessing when you think about it, the fact that we've have been running it for this long to, to kind of have it figured out. But, you know, we're in and out of you know, horses, you know, in, in the Wyoming camp for sure, uh, side-by-sides, four-wheelers, in and out of the truck, everything like that. And I see you all the time. You just you drop the tailgate of the pickup, clip that rifle yep. in, close it up, and we're ready to roll for the day, you know, versus doing the You know the what comes to mind is uh, remember when we were in Arizona on the NAV hunting that elk and then we spot what was a mile and a half or whatever. Yep. There's actually the clip in the intro of the show, and you can see me and the elk in the same frame because we're only like 80 yards apart. Yep. And that scabbard, I literally just wore it like a backpack. Yep. Oh, gotcha. I, I didn't even – I just grabbed, like, a few little things out of my pack that I threw in my pocket. Yeah. You know, extra rounds or whatever. And then I just put my scabbard literally on as a backpack, and then we just went. Yeah. And then when I got close, I did – you know, I just pulled the gun out, and we went up and – we ended up killing that bull right out of his bed, but yep. And just like I discussed with them, I I have no problem putting my meat on top of the rifle in the scabbard and and packing it out like that. That's not an issue for how I mind doing it. But uh, you preferentially usually will carry your rifle by the mm -hmm. carry handle the actually handle. on your side as you're walking. Well, so preferred I'd have you pack the meat. Yeah, yeah, I'll of carry course, the right? gun. <laughs> but if I'm in a jam, yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Well, and uh, you know, with all of this, the more the, I guess the more hunts or more, you know, you, there's always a, some crazy, you know, issue like um, with with the gun thing, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And so one of the things in Colorado, the big issue is altitude and ease of use because you're sucking wind, right? Mm -hmm. You just at higher altitude. And even an off, uh, I say it, an off camber pack or one that's offset, if you're trying to carry a gun on one side and even out the weight on the other, it can be a problem, especially when you're already, if you're coming from back east and you're, you know, it, it's just more fatigue on your body. So being able to spot her one side, tripod the other, gun in the middle is huge. And then if you, you run into like the horse thing, all right, we got that fixed. If you're four-wheeler, for me, I didn't realize how much abuse a four-wheeler puts not only on your pack, but definitely on your gun until I start, I know I'm not a four wheeler guy. Yeah. It yep. beats the shit out of everything. Like it rubs holes and packs. So you Vibrates think about everything to death. Oh yep. yeah. You think about what it's doing to a rifle. So what we started doing is, um, basically padding packs and packs, put the rifles between and then strap that down. Well, if you're, your rifle is in a pack and you can't detach it, it's going to be hard to get as much protection as you could being able to detach the scabbard and put it exactly where you want it. Another thing is boats. You know, and how often does that happen? Well, rafting and boats is yeah. starting to happen, right? Like Tiburon yep, Island. Do that, huh? Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, raft. you're you're going down the river, and I mean, um, or or rafting. Well, uh, I, it would work in a pack for sure, but with you have that big lump of a pack, and then obviously this long piece with rifles with things sticking out of each side. When you can unbuckle it, it offers an infinite amount more areas to mm -hmm. put the rifle. So all of those things I didn't really think about when you first talked to, to me about this. And then 
obviously two years later we've been on a lot of different hunts where I, that's kind of constantly on my mind and I'm like Shh, this would work way better for this I can understand what you know about Bob and Cal were thinking so exactly anyway. exactly okay so part two my question was when are we going to see that bag I I would guess man I hate to even guess anymore <laughs> are we two um, years out <laughs> no, I mean, definitely by hunting season. How's that? So there's a bag that uh, goes with this system that, uh, if you can imagine, it just straps over the top. It can go under it, but over the top of the scabbard, and it works, one, uh, to hold all the different equipment you need to take it, well, a short or long-range shot. It'll also hold a little bit of gear, but two, it also works to if you to strap in the meat. So you've got meat in the grab it, let's say, that works as a compression system, and it keeps all your like high value items from getting crushed. Um, that uh, I hate to get say a date other than by hunting season, but it is coming soon. Um, <laughs> the, the the problem that being totally candid, the amount of growth we're receiving at Kefaru is um, I barely graduated high school, right? Like <laughs> it, I'm learning a lot as I go, and so there's certain things that I'm really good at, and the daughters are really good at, and then there's other things that. I just don't think unless you've, you know, run multiple businesses, um, you you don't know until it happens. And yeah. your system is a prime example. Like it got had to get put to the side because of giant military orders, right. right? And that was one of the main problems. We won this military contract of 2,800 packs, Oof. and they sucked everything you wanted out the door. And I'm like, I can't really tell Bob this right now. But that's what's going to happen because you don't want to let the military down. So that that was we didn't know that was going to happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. And I mean, honestly, like with this system, that'll be a huge seller for the military to I bet I'm betting once this gets out with what you guys designed. I mean, and that's the kind of deal. We're not like a company like, um, uh, let's say, Mystery Ranch, who has these giant contracts for line units or forever. We do more customized things. Eric Bender just drove down to 10th Group. Um, and hung out with a bunch of different ODA teams that they did what you do. They laid out everything they have. Yeah. Bender goes to town. Well, uh, some of the things they asked for is almost identical to, to this. So I think we're going to be able to kill two birds with one stone because Bender didn't bring your system. He just told them about it. Well, they have, you know, you've got the different teams and, and on each team, generally there's a sniper and they were talking about, there's always a problem with carrying a heavy weapon system, especially if you're carrying, um, I mean, they have a few different ones, but if you're also carrying a bunch of other specialty or a bunch of other kit, yep. it's a pain in the butt. So I think people be, I mean, I know people are already excited about this because of my phone, but I think once the full system is done, it'll be even, you know, even more sought after, I guess. Yeah, I, I agree. And the, the intent of the design of the other piece to the system that'll be released here before hunting season is that... The, it's designed to where you, you're going to remove the rifle out of the scabbard and you're going to lay down and your pack's going to be right next to you to shoot from the prone position. And everything we need as a long range mm-hmm. shooter, whether that be our, our range finding system, ballistic computer, our rear rest, um, ammunition, anything else you can think of? Kestrel. Yeah, Kestrel. Yeah, we're very gadget. Kestrels, yeah, wind right. meters. We're yeah. long range guys are, I mean, it's not a cheap deal there's a lot involved if you're doing it the right way Uh, but what i wanted is you know and what bob wanted is to be able to lay down there and have all of that stuff at arm's reach so i don't have to change my position the spotter doesn't have to say you know how many times bob in the past have have you you know grab me this out of my pack because you don't want to change your position right so now i'm running from my spotting position to your position to your pack back to you you know that way the shooter has everything that he needs he can lay down take his shot there and the spotter can do his job spotting and our cameraman can do his filming you know so that's the whole intent behind the system i never realized not having shot many animals at 24 power it is a task to get back a target acquisition is a problem um i didn't you know i, I like immediately take the shot and i'm dialing it back and don't touch the scope and i'm like we mean don't touch the scope. I can't see shit. Oh, and yeah. uh, trying to dial it back. And I'm not, um, I'm a great shot. I am not a great long range hunter. Um, in fact, this is totally different, but I should tell you this story quickly because you'll laugh. The, the G7 range finder, they hand it to me and the, the rifle and they're like, click on it. And um, seems simple enough and I can shoot, right? I was just like, you know, toenailing the rock at a thousand yards, three round group like this. And so I take um, the rifle out and we head in and, 
when I head out the tent door, they're like, hey, make sure and zero out the elevation and windage. I'm like, All right. I didn't think about it. Okay. So I get up, giant North Idaho mule deer in the rut, snowing. And uh, so I start cranking on the turret for the uh, elevation, uh, zeroes it out. And for whatever reason, in my brain, I wasn't thinking. I start cranking on the windage. And I get like three, four, five cranks. I'm like, huh. Oh, that didn't Man, stop. that just doesn't make any sense. Because if I go one <laughs> way, way. <laughs> you were going full revs. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm just cranking on it because I again I'm excited to shoot this deer. So the total system of it's foolproof. Just click on it and dial it in. I fucked that up. I'm and so I'm like, huh? How many revolutions did I turn? Okay, so I text, hey, where's your gun zeroed at on elevation? And, of course, I get back, zero is zero. What do you mean? And I'm like, where was it at? And he's like, well, we just zero it. And then that's where it's yeah, at. It's like, and, why are you asking me zero is zero? And, <laughs> and I, so I call, and I'm like, now, look, you're not going to believe what I did, but this is what I did. And they're like, yeah, guess. Think, <laughs> think, so <laughs> dial her back. <laughs> The deer didn't even move. By the time it was done, it looked like I had it invaded Al Qaeda. <laughs> Still hadn't even come close to the deer. Never I ran out of ammo. No, because your wind is so. Was they dialed. said oh, I was yeah. 14 feet off by the time that bullet got there at that distance from where I left it. That was yeah. before, so I must have put way more than so three. So you were cranks. more than that. Oh yeah, that's point. where I ended up, and I was like, huh. So that's my um, what do they call me? The long range miss machine um, <laughs> is what they're because again, and I. I it is not as simple as you would think. There is a lot more to, I mean, that's which is why you guys are so successful. <laughs> it's not, you can't just, I mean, you might be able to, but it's not as easy as just wind calls or another thing. So if we dial the gun for you, you're good to go, though. Oh, Avery, I've never <laughs> missed when somebody dials the gun in for me. But, uh, man, I tell you what, when somebody's not, good I, Lord. I can tell you that Bob, I have seen how much more efficient the system is made, Bob. I mean, we, we Bob had a, an Oregon a gov tag this year, and, and we almost killed this bull we called uh, the shark tooth bull. Oh, yeah. And we were we kind of made a, a stock on this bull, and it's me and Bob and, and the cameraman. And – uh, I think Bob spotted the bull for, or I spotted it from a different well, position. Well, remember we and Bob split a spotted bit. it from his position, and I'm like running at him, f- trying to flag him that I saw the bull, and he looks at me like, "Yeah, idiot, I I see it too." You know, <laughs> we were just like this on it. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. You know, so I'm like, okay, well, if we hike over here, we'll go down this hog back, and Bob's just like, "No, I'm just gonna kill him right here," and <laughs> you know, and he just gives us the look, and I've hunted with him enough to know, like, oh, he's not kidding, he's just gonna kill him from here. So he has his pack, he gets off and he just starts pulling the gun out and he's has all of his stuff right there. And Bob doesn't wait for anybody. Like the cameraman better just be filming. Yeah. Like that's pretty much <laughs> it. You that don't even get better be on. Yeah. Like you don't even, we used to get the, you know, the, Hey, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to shoot thing. He, Bob doesn't do that anymore. Yeah. So there's the cam- a safety for that. In the <laughs> yeah. When, when <laughs> you, you see the safety go off, it. that's like, you better be ready. <laughs> So I'm in the scope trying to get ready to spot a shot, and the cameraman's trying to get the camera on, you know, what we're doing. But his system was so efficient. He was laying down right there, had his range. He was doped, ready to go already. I mean, he was beating us to it, yeah. you know. And yeah. that's – it just shows what, what the system can do for you versus trying to find all these things in a pack that isn't designed for the actual intended use that, you know, that we do it for. Since you told a funny story, I got to tell you that I did think that shark tooth bull was the next 400-inch Oregon bull, I'm going to tell you. And it was very much not. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I did not kill it. Yeah. But we seen it from a plane, and – uh the, the reason we call it shark tooth is it had, well, I don't know what we, yeah, three, three or had four a little row of them. Yeah. Um, on the back. And he was big framed, but he just, I don't know, man, he just needed some more age and yeah. some more size. But that thing from above just looked ridiculous. Looked like a dinosaur. He just man. had yeah. a, a bull that has a really big frame from the air looks ginormous. Yeah. It's Caribou hard to judge the same way. Else, right? yeah. yeah. So we know that we've flown enough to know that, you know, oh boy, he looked 360. Well, he's probably 340, you yeah. know, or, or whatever. So like 240 for, if I'm judging yeah. what I figured out, <laughs> I told Calvin, I had to admit, cause so literally sort of build onto the story about how fast I got down and ready to shoot. Because in my mind, as we went out to find this, this was a first light scenario, right? We flew the day before, looked at a bunch of elk, found this bull. And I literally tell the pilot, I'm like, we just found a giant go to the airport. Yeah. Right. And then we get the time clock starting. Then we go to dinner, we go to bed and it's the next morning. And then we're driving in the dark and Calvin's mapping, like how we're going to get out to where we're going to see this elk. So once we see the elk in my mind, this bull is dead. I just got to, I got to conduct the act. The bullets just got to hit him. Right. Yeah. 
Well, then once we realized this pool's not near as big, and then we walked back to the truck, at some point I figured, like, okay, I got to admit, right? So I said, Calvin, I said, I think when we see the next bull that we think is 400, I better just go right back to 300 and let's start from there. From there, start building up. <laughs> yeah. That's God, funny. it was tough, man. How we, big do you think the bull was? I don't, what did we think? 340. 340. Yeah. 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 It's, I learned. 340 the, bull looks real big big yeah i mean yeah. He you start, and he big, is a big but, bull in, in this yeah. state especially he had a big frame he had good age he just didn't have the genetic you know, i mean that bull's got to be close to 340 superiority there, yeah 330 something 340 is that about right yeah what is it how much 320 something? 300 uh-huh. oh no it's bigger than three <laughs> no, I, I don't know man uh, but again like that's my the, 400 what's that <laughs> oh yeah well i just when we were in the territories and uh now i've never flown at a helicopter um and looked at moose specifically moose that are 70 inches wide right or 440 inch caribou like a sheet of plywood out there yeah. oh it's and and you know they're trying they're like clay's looking down that's a freaking dinosaur and i'm like they all look like dinosaurs from up here man it took <laughs> a while to get up there to get used to it but i i, I the, the long range thing with with me was just with john and avery and john he shot his mountain goat at um maybe 1280 or but there was a, a glacier up above us. Um, we and you know when we had crampons and he was like a forty and in with a bow or a thousand and out with a gun type of a guy. And we found the biggest goat and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, you're not going to kill that with a bow ever. Like I don't care if we have rappel ropes and pull a freaking rappel off with the longbow on your back. That is not going to die in that terrain. Thank God we didn't try it. He cranks this thing, and so it's roughly twelve hundred yards over. Six hours later. I'm choking it out because the first bullet didn't kill it. It was still alive. We got over there. We didn't have a gun. Didn't have a knife, right? I don't know. Liver shot. Still, It stayed alive. So it took us six hours to get there. Devil's club. I'm upside down. Legs wrapped around it. Horns. (laughs) It was bad, right? So I mean, I want to publish this. So we get get it finally taken care of. And, uh, I mean, seven, eight more hours back. I'm yeah. only talking like I can yell and you could hear me right from where we were. Yes. And, oh, Lord, there was a few times. And I keep my, you know, cool pretty good, but I, I had an uh, elbow issue, right? I couldn't do a pull-up. So John's like a monkey. I mean, he only weighs 140 pounds, jumps on these vines, swings up, gets above me. He's like, man, this weighs a lot quicker. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're going alone because I can't do that. <laughs> and he was like, what do you mean? And I'm like. On my best day with one arm, I cannot pull myself up that way. Climb down. And he was like, all right, I'll climb down. We'll go." He's always in a good mood, right? <laughs> and you look back, by the time we were completely done, literally it, it was a 12 to 14-hour ordeal on a 1,200-yard shot. That's the things that, I mean, we would have never got that animal without being able to shoot that distance. Yeah. But I think you probably would have killed everyone because I was like, it can't be that bad. I slid at one point in time in Willows with John. I, I'm such a dick, too. I get to the bottom, all good, come on down. Because once I hit and I fell that far, I'm like, well, I don't want to be the only guy that fell that far. <laughs> Everybody should. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but just bait him right in. Those are the, yeah, it worked, too. John came right in behind me. Um, but I, uh, I never really realized the capabilities of the stuff that you guys do and what you offer and how accurate it can be if you put the time and effort into it. It's pretty amazing. So Yeah, it's a, diff- it's a different game, you know, since you're an archery hunter. I'll tell you, it's funny. A lot of the calls that we get nowadays <clears throat> are from archery hunters that are, like, deep-rooted archery hunters. Mm-hmm. And... um it might be a way that they're finding the next challenge. Yeah. Right? They, they love the challenge of archery. And that's entertained them for however many years. And now they maybe have an opportunity to pull this tag or that tag. And so they want to be set up with the capability to shoot further, and they love the game. It's kind of that same challenge. You know, it's that polar opposite, but it's still the challenge. That's yeah. what I tell It's just a capability is all it is. Yeah. I just I just finished my Utah hunting applications, and it was like, you know, I apply for rifle hunts, muzzleloader hunts, and archery hunts because I'm just looking for the dates and my schedule, what yeah. can fit. You know, guys are busier than ever. And yeah, you don't care what you kill I, it with. I don't care. Go. I'll, I don't discriminate against either of the weapons. I don't care what it is. I'm not going to use a stick bow like this psycho over here, but, you know, none of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it makes a huge difference to have that capability. And yeah, we, we, I mean, on the TV show, you'll see, you know, you'll shoot something however far, but I mean, this year, how many elk did you kill under 60 yards with your gun? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. It just happened to work out. It just was the way it went. You know, that gun kills them at 60 yards or it kills them at 600 yards. It's just a matter of capability. That's all it is.
Yeah, no, I understand that. Believe me, I'm the, with the recurve, especially on these expensive hunts like the stone sheep. Yeah. I can't afford to do that twice, but I want to kill it with a recurve. And I already told the guys, hey, if I end up going on this hunt, it's a 15-day hunt. And if by day 13, I'll I don't give, I'll crank one to 1,000 yards. I'm bringing John with me, right, or he's so bringing yeah, me. Yeah, you'll have a setup. Yeah, I'll have a setup. Um, but, I mean, I, I have had great success with the recurve, but if I've paid that much money to go on that hunt, I'm not enough of a dedicated archer on a poor boy, um, a blue collar, uh, budget to say for the pride of shooting it with a recurve, I'm going to go home with nothing. No, screw that. I'll, I'll shoot with a gun. Um, <laughs> I'll give it all I got until <laughs> last day or two and all I mean, the, the moose and the yeah. grizzly were the same. I, I just, I couldn't get it done. I had to shoot it with a gun. Sure. I can't go on those things twice. So yeah, it's a cool option to be able to do that though. Yeah. All right. Well, we got guys showing up at the shop. Probably should shake some hands and wrap this thing up. So, uh, in a, Soft conclusion, we got a bag coming. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a really cool pack now. We've got a bag coming. Yep. You got a cool pack, cool scabbard, and a bag coming. Yeah, All so right. we have the system available. Um, we have some in stock now. We're going to be ordering some more from Aaron yep. at Kefario this coming week. And uh, if you want to get your hands on one or have some questions, um, you can call me. Um, I'll get, I guess I'll give my cell phone number out. I did. Yeah, where do you want to go? You want to go shop yeah. phone, cell phone? What do yeah, you want? No, yeah. uh, already, you can call me, uh, mine, text, so. email. <laughs> Uh, my email address is Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N, at moa rifles.com or you can call, text um, 503-757-9844, and uh, we can go over any other questions that we might have not answered for he you. He prefers or, really or late night text. Yeah, really late night. And breathe heavy when you call. <laughs> <laughs> all um, right, guys. So we'll have it. Anything yeah. else? No, that's all I got. Thanks for having me out here. And, yeah, we better start shaking hands. All right, that's a wrap. Yeah.